focus. Focus is our theme for Lent. And so in addition to the discipline of whatever you gave up, or in addition to whatever it is you're adding to your life for spirituality, we at Chapel Roswell want you to have the focus you need, to focus on your life in Christ. And I know, too, that we are focusing on the little voices around us. We have our beautiful playgrounds, and so I just want to add to Emma's invitation and remind you that it is available here should you need it. Um, We meant for it to be for littles, um, but if adults you get bored, you can come color as well. (laughs) But in the spirit of focus, we actually have a Chapel Roswell photographer. You may or may not know this. And so to help us think through our focus and what that means to different people in different ways, we have invited our Chapel Roswell photographer to be with us today. Her name is Stephanie, and we are so thankful that Stephanie is here with us. Uh, You may recognize Stephanie because she is here with her family almost every week, Um, and parts of her family are part of our production, and they're part of our musical team, and so it is so fun to have the Warrens here, uh, a vibrant part of the life and faith of Chapel Roswell, and so I would love to introduce you to Stephanie. Thank you for being here, and during the course of our time, we're going to have different pictures on the screen, and so I'm just going to ask you, first and foremost, Stephanie, What is it that got you interested in photography? Well, you hear people talk about um, their spiritual gifts. And um, I I don't think my spiritual gift is actually photography. I I think think it is noticing things. Um, from, From the time I was young, I kind of thought I was just maybe a more emotional person or maybe kind of a mushy person because I would notice these small things that were highlighted and I just thought they were so beautiful. And um, my faith was really growing when I became a mother 12 years ago. And I began to realize that these small moments that were making me so emotional were... Um, they were God's glory on display. And um, I wanted to capture that. And uh, at that point, I had been resisting getting a smartphone. I thought they were a fad. (laughs) It would go away. (laughs) But my husband said, you know, it has a camera, and you could take pictures of the baby. So I folded, and um, I got an iPhone. But you know, those, those beginning cameras on the iPhones, I wasn't really satisfied with the images that I was getting. They're, they're great now, by the way. They take really beautiful pictures now. But the images that I was getting at that point were, uh, they just weren't what I was seeing. And I knew there was a way to get pictures of what I was seeing. So I dusted off this old DSLR camera that was a hand-me-down from my father-in-law, and I had no idea how to use it um, except put it in automatic and and take pictures. So I took classes, and Mm -hmm. I studied, and I learned how to get that camera in manual and get get pictures the way I was uh, satisfied with, the way that I saw them. Um, And I think my hobby was at its height when I had... I had three kids under the age of four, and I was a stay-at-home mom. And um, three kids under the age of four, and yeah. you're a stay-at-home mom. So it, the days can be a little mundane sometimes. It may be repetitive, but photography helped me see God's glory in a lot of the small moments that were just happening in everyday life. And I, when I had my camera with me, I was constantly just looking for God's glory. And if you look, it's there. It's there when you see your kids playing and just doing everyday things in the yard. Um, I, I love watching my husband play with our kids. Um, you know, God's glory is on display when the boys are just acting like hooligans in, in the road, um, even on a, you know, a rainy day 
in March where you can't go outside, I think you can see God's glory just in the eyes of a grumpy two-year-old. Um, you know, just, just small moments. And I, I, think, I think some people think you have to climb a mountain in the middle of the night and wait for the sun to rise to see God's glory. But you can see it at the kitchen table. Um, it's, it's there. Um, you can see it in a muddy backyard. And um, you can see it right in your messy living room. How did you start taking pictures for Chapel Roswell? Um, we were already members of RUMC before Chapel Roswell even started. Um, and when Chapel Roswell was new, we were coming to the first few services that they did. And I just, I really felt, I felt the Holy Spirit in, in everything that I saw. And after I had been to several services, um, I, I asked the pastor at the time, Eric, if I could bring my camera and start capturing some of these beautiful moments that I was just feeling and seeing, because uh, I thought they were really powerful. And I was, I was happy that Chapel Roswell used them because I had found a way that I could help and, and I could be involved and, and maybe use this ability for God. So, uh, so yeah, I was able to... Where's my last one? Oh. Just the small Sweet things. faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun stuff. It certainly <laughs> captures the energy of Chapel Roswell. You got it from the <laughs> chandelier to praise to singing to just jumping uh, at Alive in Roswell. <laughs> I love it. So how do you use focus as a photographer? Okay, so <clears throat> focus is the, is the point of concentration in an image. Um, it's, it's the sharp, clear part. Um, a photographer is very intentional about choosing the focus of an image. Um, it's going to be the clearest part. And technically, the focus is a result of your aperture, which is how open your lenses, it's kind of like a pupil. It op opens and closes, um, and light. So it's a combination of ap aperture and light. And um, you, can, you can control how much of your image is in focus. Uh, in a landscape like this, uh, you, would, you would close your aperture down so that it's small, and when you close your aperture down, more of your photo is in focus, so you can, this was a beautiful image as a whole. I wanted you to be able to see the water and the sky that was close to you, but also the beautiful light of the sunset and even the sailboat way back there. I wanted everything to be crystal clear. I wanted you to see the image as a whole. But here, I wanted you to just look at one thing, and that was just the beauty of these particular flowers. Um, I, I love this kind of photography. Uh, in particular, just personally. Um, so the, the, out, the soft out-of-focus background here in photography is called um, bokeh or bokeh, depending on who you ask. And um, I, I absolutely love that in an image. Um, it's just kind of a, a beautiful softness around what was important to you in that, in that image. Um, as a portrait photographer, you often go for the eyes. Um, that's kind of an obvious thing uh, to go for. Like here, it's obvious she's playing the violin, but I wanted the, the light coming from the window in her eyes here. Um, but not always the eyes. Sometimes, sometimes you want something uh, maybe that other people wouldn't notice. So you can draw your attention to a toddler's cute belly button. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and maybe that's something other people wouldn't have noticed otherwise. So, uh, let's see. You can, draw, you can draw focus through a crowd to a particular person, like I did here. Um, through crib bars to a sweet little baby. I love newborn photography. Um, you can focus on something big as a whole. This sign right here, this is my... This is the sign to 
My grandparents' lake house has been there for over 50 years. You can tell it's pretty old. Um, but I wanted you to see the sign as a whole here. But in the very next shot, I wanted you to see, you know, the, the beautiful moss growing on that sign that, you know, it, it's been there for so long. Um, getting the focus correct is, uh, is important, especially when there's a lot going on mm. in a photo. Like, there's a lot going on here. Um, and I chose to bring your attention to my son and his pig. <laughs> um, so in front of my house, there's this, there's this beautiful spot just in the middle of the road where the background is really far away. And that creates in photography what's called um, like a nice depth of field when the background is really far away. And uh, so I use this spot a lot to take my kids' pictures. Here we are at Easter. And um, here's an example of what happens here in a minute. When, when you don't get the focus correct, my sweet husband offered to take a picture with me in it. <laughs> and um, if you did... <laughs> it was so sweet that he wanted me to be in a picture. Uh, but, you know, if, if you don't get the focus correct, your attention ends up on something it's not supposed to be on, and what's important ends up kind of a blur. So that's, that's kind of an example of how photographers can use focus. We do they like do. your picture, though. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the thought that counts. counts. We agree. We love that. <laughs> um, so what... Are there times when getting the focus like this, is there a time when getting the focus is just really hard, really difficult? Yes. Um, I think if, if you have a lot of experience with a camera and you are used to, you are used to using it, um, getting the focus correct is, is easy when everything is still and the light is good. But I think there are two situations when, when focus can be really difficult. And I would say when there's movement and change in a photo or when there is darkness. And I've got some examples of that. Hold on, this closed on me. Um, so movement is really difficult um, because when something is in motion, you have to try to position yourself for success. And you also have to be prepared to try over and over again with motion. Um, with, with this shot right here, uh, Raleigh did not mind trying this over and over again. Um, and with this one, he also did not mind jumping off that boat into the water uh, over and over again. Uh, this day that my kids were jumping in puddles, I took a lot of shots that day that just ended up out of focus because they were everywhere. The kids were everywhere. Um, <laughs> Lottie Monroe did not mind jumping into that leaf pile a few times for me to get the focus that I wanted. I think it still isn't quite perfect, but I still love the picture. Um, swing pictures are notoriously hard when you're, um, when you take the kind of pictures that I like to take where the background is kind of soft and the subject is in focus, you have this it's kind of a, a vertical plane of focus, and if you are in front of it or behind it, you will not be sharp. And so swing pictures are notoriously hard. But, you know, when you, when you nail it, I love it. But more often, you know, you'll get somebody who's sort of out of focus, somebody who's in focus. Um, the great thing about your kids, if you're doing something fun, you can ask them to try again. Um, these deer obviously will not listen to me, so they would not try again. You can see the one in the front, you know, ran out of the plane of focus. The one in the middle is kind of in focus. Um, this deer right here, I, if I had time, I would have shut down my aperture so I could get more of him in focus. He wouldn't listen. He just walked right up to me. So, uh, you know, with animals, you can just take what you can get. So these pictures of these bees were really difficult. I was using what's called a macro lens to be able to get really close, and I was manually adjusting my focus. And 
I spent maybe 30 minutes taking so many pictures of these bees, and there were only two that I liked. Um, I think even when you're taking portraits, some people are <laughs> easier to photograph than others. Uh, you know, they, there they are jumping in and out of the plane of focus. And I, like snow is notoriously hard because you have to make sure the focus goes through the snow and it doesn't land on a piece of snow and what you want in focus is all blurry. Um, so that's movement. Um, the other thing that is really tough is darkness. Um, when it's dark, your lens has trouble even finding the subject. Um, your images are gonna be grainier. Um, we have the lights. But even though, even though you'll have you know, a grainier image, you'll still get beautiful shots. Um, there are a few things you have to do when it's dark. You have to open, you have to open your aperture as wide as it will go to let in as, as much light as you can. And you just kind of have to make the most of what light you have. I don't even own a flash. Um, I, I only use what light there is available. Um, but a lot of the time you can find a little bit of light somewhere. And, you know, here it is with birthday candles. We had Christmas lights on their faces. Because of Chapel Roswell, I, was, uh, I had experience with you know, a dark room and spotlights, which can be confusing for a photographer and for a camera. So I was able to go into AYL this year, which was so awesome, and um, take some really cool shots because I, I understood how to deal with the darkness and the spotlights. And um, you know, I, just, I, I used what little light there was and there were so many beautiful moments at AYL. Um, I just, I loved it. Um, and sometimes there's almost no light. Um, at my grandparents' house up in Michigan, it's, it gets so dark at night. And because of that, the stars are really beautiful. And I wanted a great shot of the stars, but uh, it, it's tough to get. And, and the only way to do that is to, is to let go of your camera because what you have to do is you have to slow the shutter way down so that it's open for a long time. You know, when you hear a camera, you'll hear click, click, um, normally. It's the shutter opening and then closing. But in, in the darkness, you have to leave your shutter open for a long time to let, to let as much light as, as you can seep in and you have to put your camera down because if there's even the slightest movement like breathing um, will make your shot blurry and um, so I put my camera down on a picnic table and I opened I opened my shutter for three or four seconds so it was click that was the open all the light comes in, click, closed. And you know, when I did that, you get the Milky Way in there. So you can see the tree lying around and you can even, on the left, you can see the point of my grandparents' little A-frame house. But darkness can be tough. <laughs> Sometimes it's in the darkness when we feel the most fear. We feel the most temptation, and we feel the most alone. But with the right focus, and with the right amount of patience, and the right amount of courage, we can see the entire world. There's a scripture that tells you the light that's available to pierce through that darkness if you want to see it. And the scripture comes from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. So do not hide your face from me. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Stephanie described to us the hardest times to have focus is when there's movement and change. And it's through this season of Lent that there are things changing. There's much movement. And this is our time to sit and be still and look for the light that we already have. Look for the light that's been there the whole time. We don't need anything helping us except for the one light of our Lord And so maybe we take time to focus on the face in front of us and say, come to me, Lord, through the face of this person I live with. Come to me, Lord, through the face of the friend that I need. Come to me, Lord, in the face of this dark situation. Will you show me the light that you have for me? Because that's what can pierce through anything. And so maybe you focus on something totally unexpected. Or maybe you focus on one thing and let everything in the back be just beautiful bokeh. Or maybe you focus on something you've never seen before because God's glory is there in the everyday. What was it, from the kitchen table to a messy living room? to a muddy outside. What may feel mundane and routine in a season of Lent, you can capture something amazing if you just see it. And it's your turn. It's your turn to do it. I'm going to ask you to be a little outside your comfort zone. And this week, I want you to look for something and capture it. Use your smartphone because Stephanie already told us that camera's really good now. Oh, yes. And if you have a fancy (laughs) camera, you can use that too. We want you to send us something that you've captured this week. And when you send it to us, please know you're giving us permission to use it. So if you don't want us to use it in somehow in the subject line or when you text it to us or email it to us, just say, please don't use it for your benefit only, and we won't use it. But we want you to send us your moment that you see God's glory. It can be anything and everything, and we cannot wait for Chapel Roswell community just to be looking for God in the details. So make sure you send that to us um, over these next days. And so now, let's take a time to respond to what God has been doing through our lives through a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, We are gracious. We are so grateful. You have been doing so many amazing things for us and through us. And sometimes it goes by and we don't even see it. May you bring a new lens to us. May you give us a new perspective so that in times where we might be aggravated or in times may we be frustrated, instead of those things, 
replace all of that with just a sense of gratitude and help us see through that new lens what you're doing. It is so easy to be distracted. It's easy to be distracted by a routine and by schedule and by work and by a call and by the next thing on our calendar or our list. Lord, break through all of it. We confess that there are times we miss it. And we confess that there are times that we brush it away. Forgive us. Forgive us for not paying attention. Lord, bring to us now a new opportunity. Help us to have a new way of life this next week. And for the people that we live with, may we together have times of focus. May we focus as a family. May we focus as friends. May we focus as roommates. May we just focus as neighbors so that we can put you first and that you be our priority. Because we know, Lord, that what we do here on a Sunday morning of worship, this is a time to find renewal. And it's a time to come back to center. But it's also a time for us to go back into the world and worship even more. And so may we be filled in all of our days. So that when we come back here next week, we may share together what we have been through and the days and the trials and the temptations, whatever they might be, we come back together and share them so that we help pull each other back into you. And Lord, whatever it is that's on our hearts, pour your spirit into it. If we are awaiting um, stressful situations this next week, if we have a hard work week or if we are nervous about someone visiting or something happening or what the phone call will be or the email will hold, Lord, may you give us just a sense of courage about it. And may we remember that you are not hiding from us. So seek your presence in all of those things. And so for the many that are hurting, we pray for them. You are the doctor. You are the great physician. So be a part of every illness, every disease, and every diagnosis, and every treatment so that you may guide the hands of surgeons and doctors and nurses and all medical attendants. And Lord, as always, we pray for the many people who are excited and celebrating. We are so grateful that you know about just joy. So as the God of joy, may you be a part of everything that we celebrate. And may we be, for other people, the community they need so they may celebrate as well. May no one grieve or be excited alone. (laughs) May they always have a companion to be by their side. Amen.